Ah yes, we meet again, the single point urban interchange, or spooey as some call it. Why do all the roads crash in the middle? What's going on with those ends? Why, why should I use one in my city? You know, how do I set it up? How do I build it? Where can I get one? All of these questions and more will be answered today on this episode of What in the heck is that? Why is that doing in Yumble's city? Guys, enjoy the video. Our story actually begins with the diamond interchange. If you're familiar with interchanges, uh, specifically service interchanges for getting on and off the highway, you may have even driven on this one. What is that? Or walked on one if you're completely insane. So the diamond interchange is very popular in North America. A very common, um, I have no explanation for that guy. A very common and widely implemented because it's relatively inexpensive. It only requires one overpass. So it's fairly cheap. You know, you can keep the ramps on the ground and it's got two intersections which work as a, as a junction using traffic lights to get traffic on and off the highway. And it's a totally fine intersection in rural areas, but in an urban setting or in a higher density area, you may find that this interchange is inadequate. But the good news is the single point urban interchange has about the same footprint as this guy here. This is a decent looking diamond, but it can easily be upgraded into a single point urban interchange. I'd like to show you how to do that today. So I'm gonna start by kind of deconstructing what we already have here. And I'm going to eliminate the ramps first. We may be able to salvage these things here, or maybe not. Let's build it from scratch. Whatever. We're, we're going to keep the overpass, in fact. That's all we're going to keep. So if you're about to upgrade from a, from a diamond interchange or anything similar to that, it might be a good idea to keep this ramp because it might prove useful, especially if you've already established this as an arterial and you want it to line up. Um, you can always delete the, the ramps going into it, and that is totally fine. You know, so pick a side and go eight units and then the other side eight units. All we really want is this center node here. It actually doesn't matter how long the ramp is. We just want to know where the project is going to begin. So this starts with uh, with this. This is the wrong type of road, but we found our center. And I'm going to use my favorite road here for for building. It's going to be the the stock two lane one way road. And we're just going to figure out a good approach for this. How far is this actually? That's 10 units away. That might be good. So a node happens to be 10 units away, or do I want 12 units away? No, 10, 10 is going to look good, I think. And I want to go four units away from that. So we're going the overpass, 10 units down, and then four units out from that, from that node. You know, it may not happen to be there for you, but you can always make it there by drawing a road 10 units down and then drawing it over to make the node happen. So four units away from that, because I'm gonna use the freeform road tool, go up and then connect to this. We're gonna need a bit of anarchy to do this. I haven't done it successfully without a bit of anarchy. I've never done it in vanilla city skylines and, and that's okay. You could do it, but the measurements are all gonna change. Everything's gonna be a bit different, but I found that that works. Four units away from the highway is the point there. I'm gonna go around and, and make that happen everywhere. Just a moment. Okay, we've got the single point ramps connected. Like I said, 10 units away from the from the overpass and four units away from the highway and then use freeform road tool to get that pretty easy. Uh, now I'd like to, I'm gonna make sure that this is a, a ramp and we're gonna go down, I'm gonna eyeball this, maybe 10 units. Yeah, 10 units probably looks good. This is gonna look a lot different from the one at the beginning of the video, but I think that there's a lot of ways to approach this and if yours doesn't come out looking exactly like this, Remember, it's totally okay. You'll learn a lot just by doing it, so don't worry about it. So I'm just gonna go 10 units down on all sides very quickly. And I, I wanna eyeball this and see what it looks like. Essentially, these are all of our left turn ramps. These are all the left turns on and off the highway. And they're gonna end up connecting to the road somewhere. I'm gonna make this connection now. Sometimes I wait, wait till the end to do this, sometimes I don't. We want this one to be grounded, probably. Maybe it's that much. Six units, 46 meters. Maybe it's five meters. Let's do five. I'm liking five. A good way to, to uh, make sure that your ramps are even, or rather to make sure that your interchange is connecting in the same place, if you find that desirable at all, is to just connect this, you know, to just make a 90 degree angle where you want the other side to go. So here I used five units, 43 meters. I wanna replicate that over here. 
five units, 43 meters. It doesn't have to be exact meter for meter, but I like to know if it's not, you know? Sometimes I'll say, yes, that's fine, but I want to be aware if that's happening. And that gets us good on all sides. The reason that I made that little horizontal road is just so it's, so we're parallel, you know, so we're, um, so it matches basically just for aesthetic, no reason in particular. From here, you can take your, uh, move it. Actually, all of the slopes are gonna change drastically later. So let's save that for a little while and let's see what's going on with this overpass. I'm actually gonna delete one side and keep the other side. And you'll see why in just a second. If you delete both sides, you are in trouble trying to get a 90 degree angle here. Let me, let me tell you, you're in trouble. And for this, I'm gonna use a, an asymmetrical road. We've left that road on purpose just to keep our, our angle correct. And I'm just gonna pick, this probably isn't the road we're gonna need by the end, but I'm just gonna pick a road that's similar in width. And let's see what happens here. I'm gonna go out by an amount. Maybe it's 18 units. Seems fine to me. I know I don't sound certain, it's because I'm not. It's because I'm kind of making it up, but that's the fun of it, in my opinion. And I'm gonna keep it elevated for now, just so it doesn't look confusing. So 18 units out. Looks fine, we'll adjust the slope later. What that gives us is a potential landing point for our right turn. So this road, though it is backwards, it will be a left-hand turn for this traffic. That right turn won't exist because we will have a right turn so I think I've got it. We're gonna keep the 18 unit uh, slope here. I swapped out these roads for some network extensions to roads, and that'll be fine for now as a placeholder, just so it's not distracting. Um, so 18 units away from the center, I'm gonna take this node and connect it to that one, just to give us our right hand turn. And let's see what this looks like the whole way around. I've only tried it on one so far, but I'd love to see what it looks like on all of them, just to see if it suits our needs. And as I said before, this is not going to look quite like the the <laughs> interchange from the beginning of the video, but it's going to be very similar. The lines are going to be identical, though the spacing may change. It's okay if your spacing varies as well. It's going to work great. I wouldn't worry too much about it. Uh, this is good. I'm going to extend the ends of this just so the, the pillar isn't distracting there. I don't really like the look of it. Now let's talk about interchange height. I've heard a lot of different opinions about how tall your interchanges should be. I think that the top, this is this is all opinion, but based on the height of the trucks and cars that I use, I think that the top of the road should be 10 meters from, so the deck of the overpass should be 10 meters from the underpass on a highway. That's my opinion. Your mileage may vary once again, but what I'd like to do is just show you, we're, we're actually going to split the difference. So we're gonna keep that difference of 10 units and I'm gonna make a, an example of a negative five meter ditch there. And I'm going to make a positive five meter elevated road there. And we are gonna base the entire interchange on those two values. So we're gonna use our, <laughs> our dummy roads here to get our heights, positive five. So this is shrunk down now. Look how weird it is, isn't it cool? And we're gonna use, um, I'll, I'll put that back in a second, but we're going to make a road directly under here Rather, we're gonna make two nodes as points from which to slope and also to get the height correct. So I'm gonna put this one to negative five. I'm gonna put the upper deck of the road to positive five. So we're, we're still maintaining that 10 meter difference so that the trucks that I've chosen can fit. And now we're gonna use move it. Here's a little lesson on move it. If you've seen some of my other videos, you probably already know this. Or if you don't, it's okay. You're gonna learn right now. Slope. So click all of the nodes while holding shift, all of the nodes that you want to slope, as long as you know your starting point and your end point, and then slope them. And that works great. And we're gonna do that a whole bunch on this, just to kind of see what it looks like. So I'm gonna use move it one more time. And by that, I mean four more times over here. We're gonna slope these. And that should give us a fairly decent I think it does, yep. Gives us a fairly decent grade going up to the deck from this point. So let's do that on the other three sides. And what I'd also like to do, I've heard this called the dump and fill method. 
It's where we ground the roads that are close to the ground, just because it's less expensive and it kind of looks more realistic. So we're going to end up grounding roads that don't really need to be up on, up on uh, uh, pillars, because that's very expensive in real life. And it just doesn't look as good, in my opinion. That looks pretty good. The reason that I chose the four unit spacing is for this curve here, but also so that the the fill, so that this, this uh, slope and this mound of land isn't causing friction with the highway network. We've got our general shape established and all of our lines are correct, but our lane math is all wrong on the entire thing. So I'd like to take a second and figure that out. Um, I deleted the ends because we're gonna end up using four lane road with sound barriers from the mass transit pack here. I've already upgraded these to two lane highway ramps and a one lane highway ramp here, two lanes making the left turn. I want two lanes on all of these just to keep the volume high so it can move a lot of traffic. But on the ends here, what I'm gonna end up doing is 12 units of four lane ramp that then goes down. Let's do it on both sides actually. 12 units of four lane highway, rather, not ramp. And then that's gonna break down into two lane highway with sound barriers, love that. If you're familiar with lane math, then you'll, you'll know why this happened. But really, we're just gonna have two lanes breaking off here. So I want two, two through lanes, which take the exit. I'm gonna make that look a little, which, excuse me, which stay on the highway, and we will make it look nicer in just a second. And then two lanes, which exit here. If I really want to get crazy, let's see what this looks like if that were three lane. This is an experiment. This is not part of the plan. Oh, I'm going to do that. I am absolutely going to do that. We're going to have two lanes exiting into three lanes, which I'm fine with. You can always, you can always have less exit into more without any problems. The inverse is not true. But what this gives us is one exiting ramp, which is great and then two through ramps so that if traffic backs up onto this, it can back up into the left two lanes without issue. I think that's a great solution. I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna make sure that our lane math is correct on all the sides and maybe spruce it up a little bit. I think I found a good compromise. I'd like to do three lane highway up to four lane highway, two lanes break off. They upgrade to three so that there remains two left turns and one right turn and the math all works out, and I've done that on all sides now. So let's look at this though. Let's look at this center, the overpass. It still has issues. If you analyze this, you'll see there's two lanes going through, one lane exiting. So we've already got a discrepancy there. I need a two lane road on this side. And then I'm gonna have two lanes turning left here. And I'd like two lanes going through. So that means that I need two lanes here. So that works out to a four plus two. And I believe I have that from network extensions. So now we've got our math correct on that side, though our lane management is all kinds of wrong. Our math is correct on this side and it all works out. So let me show you the way that you're gonna do this in traffic manager, just to, now that we've got the right types of roads, I don't recommend doing this till the end, but just to illustrate the way that this thing works, this one's correct. This one is not. We're gonna end up, uh, let's use lane connectors for this. You can click it, as long as your lane math is correct, do control S and it should automatically know what you wanna do. So what we're, what we're doing here, I like that. The left lane becomes our two left turning lanes. The middle lane becomes our right through lanes and the right lane becomes the exit ramp. And these three are obvious, one, two, and three. It just lines up the two plus one equals three. The center is a bit, maybe not trickier. It's a bit uh, more unique than that first one. We've got our two left turns. We've got our two through ramps. These are left turns. So by all means, turn left. And you'll notice there's a bit of conflict here. So it's gonna require a light, of course. I'll show you how to set up the light as well, but managing the traffic is just as important. So same thing symmetrically, these are left turns. Uh, we're gonna flip the camera, same thing on the other side, left, left, through, through. That is the center, what a mess. We'll have to do a, a light there, of course. And control S 
will give you the automatic lane control commands just to uh, to automatically stay in lane. One more little appointment that I'd like to try to this whole thing. One more little additive. What road is this? You'll notice that the angle here on this side, it looks really good. The merge there looks fairly reasonable. But on this side, it looks a bit steep and node controller is going to help a lot with this too. But I'd like to start by using move it on each side and just see how far I can get away with. So you'll notice the texture on the right there starts to tear. So I'm going to undo that and keep an eye on things. I'm going to move this kind of up and to the left as far as I can until it rips. Then hold control to give us fine movement and just back it off until the seam looks better. I'm just going to go around and do that on each side. So now I'm actually going to go around with node controller and do a whole bunch of stuff. This is going to be a whole whole host of different things. So I'm using the current version of node controller. It's, um, what is it, 3.0 point something or, or version 3 at the very least. And what I want to do is nudge all of the lanes in a certain direction. So if you've already seen my node controller video, please go watch that. I'm going to give you the briefest um, application for it here, but I'm mainly going to go around and do it off camera. So hold, uh, click the node that you want to align to itself, hold shift and click the corner and then click the corner you want to align it to. So essentially I'm bumping this whole thing to the right is what's really going on. This one bumped to the right, love that. Uh, likewise, you can do this on the other side, you know, however you want to do it. But I want this to be aligned with the already existing highway because it's going to look much, much nicer and the lane changes are going to be quite a bit more realistic. And this is probably my favorite part of node controller. Um, I'm also going to go down the center and align these. I'm going to nudge these slightly towards the middle. So you'll see that this side ends up, you know, being a little closer together, but I'll have to do that on every single node in between. Uh, on this side, I'm going to hit that there. And I think the result should be great. If this whole road gets nudged to the right a little bit. Yes. So our left turn lanes are aligned with themselves and our right turn lane has a unique little divot. I'm happy with that. And I'm going to align this to this and see what happens. I may not like it. That's not bad. It moved the whole road, but it's not bad. And I'll click the make ends straight. And of course, if we want to make this curve even gentler, I can always increase the offset as much as we want. Or maybe we'll make ends. Uh, I kind of like what I'm seeing here. I'm going to go to 20 units on all of these sides. I'm going to go around and make that change to the whole entire interchange. I'll be back in just a second. And here it is in all of its beauty. I think it's I think it came out pretty good. A new no, new node controller was a huge help in aligning these guys so that the roads are kind of justified correctly and they don't just center on themselves like usual. Uh, many of you will know what I mean. Roads look very funny when they <laughs> when they connect in an offset way. But all of the markings came out pretty good, I think. All the different areas. Some of them are slightly different than the other single point urban interchange on the other side. But you'll notice all of the merges make sense. There's two and then these guys merge down. And then there's two plus two equals four. And then that merges down. I'll have to adjust these little finer details later, but that merges down to three and then we're out. And that is essentially it. I'm um, here. I'll focus on the, the one that I've already <laughs> finished a while ago. This one actually has traffic in it. Um, the thumbnail probably has some details. I'm going to add that in a little bit, but usually I just do some bushes and maybe on occasion I'll do a retaining wall. This one, I went all out fancy mode. There's a retaining wall that you can't even see behind the bushes. You know, the real ones will know how much work a retaining wall takes. Um, but everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for letting me uh, preach about the, the the single point urban interchange. It's really, really good. It's really effective and it doesn't take up that much space. And I would actually say the one that I just built takes up even less space than the one that I did in my city. Plus it's got this three, three lane road built in that the other one doesn't have, which alleviates some of that merging tension and some of that splitting um, splitting issues that may occur. And it also gives this left turn a little bit of space to back up. Um, I'm going to have to save the traffic light for another time, but I can tell you the best way to do it is to have, that's the one thing I forgot is the traffic light, but it's to have the left turns go at the same time and the straight throughs go at the same time and the other left turns go at the same time. So it's a three cycle light. The lefts, you know, the lefts entering the highway can go at once. The lefts leaving the highway can go at once. 
and the straight through traffic can go at once. So three cycles, give it as long as it needs, and the ends are free flowing, so that should be very, very, very easy. No light required on the ends. Um, everybody, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out. I really appreciate the support. I appreciate your pres presence here. Um, thank you for commenting. Thank you for subscribing. Thanks for liking the video, all that good stuff. Feel free to check out my other tutorials and other builds. Uh, also, feel free to check me out at twitch.tv slash yumbletv. I stream two to three days a week they, these days. Uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for being here. Guys, I'll see you in the next stream or the next video.